So my T300 is a vertical lift machine and my lift cylinders are actually leaking at the top. And this is not uncommon for a vertical lift style machine because uh, the cylinders kind of up in this upright position and it seems like they leak a little more than uh, than like a radial lift machine where the uh, the cylinders in horizontally. And I don't know, I guess the theory behind it is dirt and oil and grease just kind of sit up here on this wiper seal and every time you go up and down it's just it's giving it that uh, that possibility of pulling trash in behind that wiper seal. So if you got a vertical lift machine, you're probably gonna have to do this yourself someday. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it. A lot of people ask me, well, how do you get the whole cylinder out? Well, I don't ever take the whole cylinder out. We're gonna get the arms up in the air, get supported. I'm gonna show you how I tear this down. So first thing I want to do is I want to drop this attachment because uh, when I get the arms up in the air and supported, I don't want any extra weight hanging over my head or anything that could accidentally fall off. I mean, stuff happens. So I'm going to release the bucket. I'm going to take the arms all the way up in the air and we're going to put our uh, boom lock support in place on top of this cylinder so we can lock the boom out. machine has power bob tab so I can just lift the handles up from inside the cab, drop the bucket and get the arms up. And then I'm going to turn the machine off and really you should have someone insert that guard for you before you get outside the cab because it's not really safe to get out the door with the arm supported above your head but i'm by myself always am okay we're going to insert this boom cylinder lock that co should come with every machine you should have one yours could be missing but hopefully you not get back in the cab now on your right side there is a manual release valve it's got a red knob on top and what we'll do is we'll just twist that a little bit and then pull it up and what that does is it manually lowers our boom and that's gonna manually lower it and it's gonna sit right on top of that boom lock and, and that just lets me know that our boom is locked out it's fully supported by the boom lock which is designed to hold the full weight of the arms and it also tells me that there's no hydraulic pressure on the lines because before I start working on this cylinder I got to break the lines the hydraulic lines loose and I just want to make sure there's no residual pressure inside those hoses now I understand that not everybody has an overhead crane I just happen to have a crane so what I'm going to do is I, the boom lock is designed to completely hold the weight of that boom however I'm still going to use my crane and a strap to uh, just a little extra added support I'm going to strap it to the top of the attach up there and that just kind of gives me an extra little secondary safety I guess make me feel a little better So now that my crane's attached up there, it's time to go ahead and break this uh, gland nut loose. I always want to make sure, before I even start pulling the pin out, I just want to make sure I can break this gland nut loose first. And um, then I'll start tearing the rest of it down. Now looking at the, uh, the cylinder, you can see there's two holes here. And that's what we're going to use to put our gland wrench in there to break this gland loose. And 99% of Bobcat cylinders um, maybe maybe 97% of all Bobcat cylinders are going to be this style. And now I, th I think we're probably all familiar with this um, moon shape or whatever the hell you want to call it type gland nut tool. And this is not my favorite. It kind of works. It just doesn't work good for me. 
What I found works best for me is this OTC. This is a Toyota cam tool, uh, OTC part number 6613, and I'll have a link in the description of this tool. But it looks like this. Uh, still got the two pins here for the gland, and it's uh, universal, so I can use this on any size Bobcat cylinder. I mean, sa same with this, but this one just slips a lot more to me. Um, I have recommended this tool to a few other guys, and they claim that it bends too easy, or they just don't like it. And to me, I just say, well, we'll learn how to use your tools a little better, because this thing is great. I've been using it for years and years. It's not gonna work on every cylinder, because some of them are really, really tight, a real pain to get out. And in that case, we'd use a big pipe wrench or channel locks or something like that. But that's not my, uh, my favorite method to use by any means because these glands are aluminum. And when we start putting uh, pipe wrenches or big channel locks on there, we, we really kind of, you know, those teeth really gouge into that aluminum and just makes it look like a, a very amateur job to me. I mean, uh, I mean, we get it, man. I see guys in our shop do the same thing they put it back together on a newer machine or something and it just, it just looks terrible and I, t I tell them I was like try to find an alternative method before you destroy the gland it just it really does look like an amateur job okay so I've got that one broke loose pretty easy I know that it'll come all the way out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to take the pin out up here and then we're going to have to break the lines loose and uh, the reason we have to break the lines loose because if i try to pull this rod out there's enough room that this rod's going to come up and completely come out of this cylinder but if i leave the lines tight it's basically a suction down here below the piston and you can't pull it out so we got to break that suction by uh, breaking these lines loose so that we can pull that rod out so let's get this thing torn down a little more Okay, so I've got my pin knocked out. I've got both my hoses loose. I'm going to uh, finish backing out this gland nut. And then when I get the gland off, you can look down on top of the piston and we'll notice that there's some residual oil, so I don't like to pull the rod out and just spill oil all over the place. I like to try to keep this as clean as I can, so I just use my little syringe here. Kind of like you'd suck out a brake break fluid reservoir, I guess. And it's not a lot. This is going to be a, a little more than a syringe full, I guess. Okay, that should do it. That's most of the oil off the top of the piston. So now I can kind of pull that rod out uh, without just making a huge mess. So see how that rod will go up through there and it'll come right out of the barrel without ever having to pull the barrel off. So now let's go put it in the vise and let old Millie eat. 
So I've got the rod in my vise now and, and we got to take it apart. We got to take the piston off so that we can get the actual gland off and, and get it resealed. And to do that, we're going to give old Millie a shot. This is Millie here and we're going to we're going to let her eat at this thing uh, and see if she can break it loose. It doesn't always come off. Sometimes we have to use heat to uh, to, to get the uh, the Loctite on this nut to uh, to kind of release. See, here's a new nut that comes in our seal kit and it's got the Loctite already pre um, pre-installed on the nuts so when we put it back on it's you know it'll be there for the next time so let's let this thing hammer away and see if we can get it off <laughs> yeah like I said it doesn't always work but it worked this time There's our piston. Set Millie aside there. This here is like a slow down. Um, this is a cushioning cylinder, so this is like the slow down sleeve when uh, when it gets to the hole for the oil to come through. It just uh, limits the amount of oil. It kind of works like an orifice to kind of slow that cylinder down. And now our gland itself. So I've got all my new seals here out of our seal kit. And I like to put my old seals back into the bag kind of as I finish up or as I take the old seals off. I like to start with the piston because the piston seal right here, we've got to kind of stretch it to get it to go on. And that's why I like to start with it. So it, it kind of shrinks back down as I'm working on the, uh, the gland itself. So. I just use my uh, sharp pick here, kind of just stab it into that. And it'll kind of just break off and, and come right out of there. And then behind that, or on the inside of that, there's an O-ring. It kind of acts like a backup to that seal. So let me grab some cleaner so we can clean that. Little brake parts cleaner. Install our O-ring. And there is tools to kind of stretch these out, but I just kind of roll it through my hands as I'm pulling. Get a little bit of a stretch on it. And start walking it into the piston. You don't want to overstretch it. It's a little oversized, but we'll kind of kind of push it and massage it down in there. And I've even seen guys run electrical tape around it to kind of pull it in, or even a piston ring compressor, just something to kind of compress that seal because we did have to stretch it. But usually it'll kind of shrink down to its size. I mean, people I've seen people put it in hot water, all kinds of different tricks, but I usually just stretch it by hand, let it sit for a few minutes, and it'll be okay by the time we get back. Again, using my pick, we can just and don't ever put your hand anywhere where this pick can slip and go into your hand. Seen that too many times, so just pop our wiper seal out. Um, backup ring and O-ring on the outside of the nut. 
and then we have an o-ring at the top as well and then inside is our actual packing and again I kind of just I don't know if you can see it I just stab into it real hard and twist it and pop it right out push down there's our actual packing seal using a little brake clean I'm gonna clean up the uh, gland nut I want to get that as clean as I can and then I'm going to inspect the wear pattern inside here and see if it's egg shaped at all and this one actually looks really good it, it's still in really good condition I just think that those seals were kind of old um, you know this wiper seal sitting on top and you can see all the oil and grease that just kind of sits in there plus the UV radiation because that cylinder is kind of sticking kind of up in the in the air there it's just more susceptible to the elements I do believe so I'm going to start with my packing and there's a special tool for this uh, you kind of want it in a butterfly shape to get it in and what I like to do is just get it started into the gland use a, a smooth pair of needle nose make sure they're clean gosh I've done this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times never had an issue and I'm gonna kind of push it in you know we're kind of getting it shaped like that butterfly or that figure eight shape once it slops in there it just pops right in really smooth no issues using that and you know they got the little three jaw uh, seal twisters or whatever I've never used them go ahead and throw a new wiper seal in so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my o-ring on the outer part of the gland nut the outer seal then I'm gonna put my backup ring on for the lower o-ring just kind of walk it around and then I'm gonna put my o-ring on behind the backup ring so if you ever take these off and get confused the, the backup ring I guess the o-ring is always on your pressure side your oil side the wet side I guess we can call it um, and and then the backup ring goes on the opposite side of the, of the uh, o-ring there so now I'm going to use a little grease. I just like to wipe the inside of it with some grease to slide it on the rod. And again, thank you so much for your support on the channel. You know, I definitely don't do this for the money, but you know if you if this helps you in any way the only reason I do these videos is for you so you know kind of give back and help me out a little bit let me know you like the video or if you don't like the video or leave me a comment let me know something give me some ideas for some videos you'd like to see because I like to do in-depth type um, uh, DIY videos because either like these are the most common issues you're gonna find on Bobcats most of the videos I do are, are simple easy do-it-yourself type projects that uh, People pay, you know, mechanics like me. Well, maybe not like me. Maybe actually smart mechanics are better mechanics. I'm, I'm more of an amateur. But um, they pay a lot of money for these type of repairs. And that, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to help you out, save some money, and show you how to do it the right way. And so now that I've got my uh, land nut back on, we got to put our, our slow down sleeve on there. And now we can put our piston on. New nut. And there's a torque spec, you know, they, they want you to run it down in a certain degrees, I believe, on this one, but I just hammer it home with old Millie. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think that uh, this piston seal's already shrunk down enough to where we can slide it back in that barrel. So she is resealed. Let's go put it back together. One thing to remember is which way your grease fitting is is facing. I've I've had to swap these around after it comes out of someone else's shop. They'll they'll just forget which way the grease cylinder goes and point it in that direction. And well, then you got to flip the eye of the rod around. slowly walk that piston back into place and it slid right down in the barrel like a butter That's basically how you do it. I'm gonna finish getting this side put back together because I gotta get that other side done. This is about a 35, 45 minute job somewhere in there to do each side. But this kind of works for, this is a G series. This works for everything from, you know, the old 773s, uh, the F series, G series, even the M series machines. It's basically the same process. You don't really ever have to pull these cylinders out unless there's a problem with the barrel itself. I usually always just pull this out the top, reseal them, put them back in. Again, thanks for watching. If this helped you at all, please give it a thumbs up or a like. And that way I can continue giving you quality videos. It just helps me know what you like best. So again, thanks for watching.